friends, comrades, sisters, brothers, peace be with you. <coughs> uh, just three years ago, I was asked by the Times, and they said to me, uh, you was in prison before? I said, yes. They said to me, you are in the Interpol red list? I said, yes, I am on that list. And they said, you alleged to have preached revolution and you want to overthrow the government of Tunisia through the revo <coughs> revolutionary means. I said, yes. They said, <laughs> they said why is that? I said, uh, a revolution is not a dirty word. So they took this word and, uh, and they put it up there. If you go to the Times online on December the 15th, 2008. So they said, oh. And then you have the, our friends like Paul Goodman and uh, Andrew Gilligan and the, the rest of uh, Harris Place. Uh, they always refer to me as, oh, by the way, someone who said, uh, yes, we will support revolution. And then uh, when I went, uh, thanks John and uh, his friends, they gave me one platform to speak about revolution, to speak up, to defend myself. Uh, I said, believe me, if I have uh, the power and the ability to have revolution in every Arab country, I will do it. And as a result, uh, <clears throat> after living here for nearly 20 years, I applied for a citizenship because I have been advised, I didn't bother before that. Uh, I, I have been advised, they said there are new laws for foreigners. If you are a foreigner, you can get arrested if you are not a foreigner. So the paper will make me a British, although I look uh, like a typical terrorist. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so I wanted to, uh, Want to apply at uh, the time of uh, what is her name? That lady, uh, Labour. No, the other one, the uh, Labour Minister for Home Office. Jackie Smith. Smith. Jackie Smith. Yes, that's the one. And she told me you you don't have a good character. I said to her, is it because I don't uh, watch uh, old stuff like your husband <laughs> and <laughs> for by the taxpayers? <laughs> anyway, uh, here we go now. Uh, I left Tunisia 21 years ago. Uh, today I was forced to cross the border with Algeria uh, on a very um, 50 degrees centigrade day, uh, thirsty and so on. That's, I remember those, uh, that day. Uh, today I'm the happiest person on earth because I've seen now the dictator uh, on Friday night, spent most of his night airborne, looking for somewhere to go, looking somewhere to stay and I'm happy I can take the tube and go home <laughs> and sleep happily. <laughs> and someone told me today, because he, he's planning to go outside the Tunisian embassy in, in, in Saudi and say, give me a passport to go back to Tunisia or I'm going to burn myself. <laughs> so he's threatening now the, <laughs> the ex-president. <laughs> yeah, you know, in, in, in Tunisia we have a law that uh, headscarf is banned. And God punished him by going to Saudi, he will see headscarf <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> and he has been asked, uh, I'm coming to Saudi, they told him, you have to ask your daughters to put headscarves on. Uh, that's what is happening. Well, uh, I just want to tell you about Tunisia. We are a very small nation, uh, 11 million people. I know we played England in 1998 in, in, in Marseille. Uh, you defeated us inside the stadium, we defeated you outside the stadium. <laughs> you know, and when we took to the streets, we were good at doing that. Uh, 11 million, uh, faith-wise, we are all Muslims, but uh, it doesn't mean uh, we are uh, mullahs and we don't have all of that. Uh, very uh, tolerant society, uh, very open society, and very educated people in, in, indeed. Uh, Tunisia, uh, I know you don't have constitution in this country till today, but we had a constitution in 1864. 1864, we had a big revolution, and uh, we managed to overthrow the government, but uh, unfortunately the, the revolution didn't see the end of it. And uh, as a result, we had a, the first ever constitution in, in, in any of that region. Uh, even before many, many uh, Western countries. And the rights of women were granted well before that as well, so it's not, it's not something the West taught us yesterday, uh, but it's something enshrined in our everyday life. Uh, after that, uh, unfortunately, the colonial powers of uh, France, 1881, uh, they occupied us, they said you didn't pay your debts. So the debts is a colonial tool always, and that's a big lie because 
they used to owe us money at that time. That's what historians, at least, they are saying. Uh, well, we struggled. Uh, in fact, uh, the, region, the region where the revolution started from this time, they fought the French occupiers for nine years. Uh, but uh, later on we were overpowered, unfortunately, because the French were supported by the Americans uh, when they came to occupy Algeria in 1930, uh, in 1830, and uh, the Americans supported them. Although when the Americans uh, got their independence, the first country ever to recognize them was Morocco. So North Africans, we, had, we, are, we were the first to recognize the independence of the United States of America. However, when America showed its muscles, the first country to have a war with and to, to shoot people outside the soil of America was Libya. So we have a, this like a relationship where we are nice to them, they are not nice to us. <laughs> uh, now, the, the after independence, uh, what happened in the French when, when they left the country like they did today in Iraq, colonial powers, are, their practices is the same always. Now when they left the, uh, Iraq, they didn't give power. Uh, to the resistance, they gave it to their, to their puppets. And we, they have to keep pumping money there to just to support <coughs> the puppets like they are doing it now in Afghanistan and everywhere they go. When they left the country, they, the proper resistance, and people who fought really for independence, uh, they were uh, assassinated, they were alienated, and the power was given to the people who grow up under the eyes of the colonial powers. And in 1958, uh, 1956 we had our independence, in 1958 they abolished monarchy, something you must do here. Um, uh, and, uh, and that's the only thing I, I liked uh, before I was born. Um, 1958, uh, the prime minister of that time, we, we used to call him the great minister, uh, and that's the official title, became the president. And since then, until 1987, we had that one man. They amended the constitution, and they made the constitution say that he is president for life. So we used to have a mock election every five years. They said, why are we wasting time? Let's make him for life, and that's it. So this chap came. He's an army general. He's not a politician. He's not a thinker. And uh, just to give you an inside story, in 1963, a group of army officers, we, we didn't have that big army, small army, they planned the coup d'etat. And this chap, the, this president, he was a, a small, uh, low-ranking officer, and they, they told him, we are coming tonight. It happened he was guarding the, guarding the place where they want to take over, and he had a, a bicycle, he went to the Minister of Defense, he told them they are coming. And uh, that's how the coup d'etat uh, uh, failed. And since then, we had the last Tunisian uh, who belongs to that group. He just died a month ago. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't see the revolution through. 48 years, he stayed in Switzerland. And he died, and we buried him just, uh, just over a month ago. It is, uh, I feel sad that he didn't live at the time to see what I have seen, because I always was praying that I live until I see what, what every Tunisian is seeing today. Uh, this president, he comes from a family of, of traitors. Uh, his, uh, his uncle was killed by the resistance, uh, and his father uh, died out of a heart attack because the resistance came for his father. So he's a properly a, a, an agent. Uh, in uh, early 80s, he was sent by the Americans to be the ambassador of Tunisia in Poland. And, is to, uh, and the Tunisian embassy was the center of the CIA in, in Poland. And that's officially, and the, uh, we have all the evidence for that. So this is a person who doesn't belong to us. In 1987, he took over. What the new regime was, is, is the old and the new actually, is based on a mixture between, in terms of politics, it's based on uh, Eastern European uh, political parties. That means uh, similar to Romania, Ceausescu, and the Eastern Germany, and so on. But when it comes to economy, it's open and free economy, at least uh, in, uh, in, uh, in writing. So uh, when he took power, things, uh, things got uh, really worse. 
because he sold all the public sector and he sold it in a corrupt manner and what was the result of that uh, less and less employment uh, the, the the private sector became just a representative of the international uh, companies so many manufacturing many factories they were just starting and coming up but unfortunately they had to close down you can't have an electronic company if sony is there you can't have a uh, I don't know if, if a, com a company to produce fridges and so on and white goods when you have Philips there, Philips goods there. And if you see the model of uh, Southeast Asia, the development was based on protect. You have to protect your economy. When I become as old as you, uh, when I become as sophisticated as you, then we can have a competition. But now, what is the competition? Is a competition when when Bush came to to Africa said, let's have exchange of trade. So you think that. Uh, and that Central Africa will sell computers to America? What, what, what is that going to do? Is, it is just, what is it? Give us your raw material and be a market for us. And that's every imperialism is doing li like that. Even the Chinese imperialism now is doing, is doing the same. Uh, friends, we live in a world of injustice, and this is the key, and this is the problem. This is the problem. 20% of the world population, they, they own uh, more than 80% of the wealth. Uh, when we talk about Tunisia, 11 million, you know what is our GDP? 35, million, 30, 35 billion. That's less than the money paid to uh, hedge boss to bail them out of the, of the recession. Less than that. So that's what we are talking about. And this, this is clear uh, cut inequality. Uh, we can't compete if I'm going to produce any goods because the low uh, price <coughs> goods, goods with low quality and low price, China didn't let anyone do it. And the high tech, you have Japan, the United States, uh, France, <coughs> Germany, United Kingdom. So what do you have a population? You have a population of consumers. Uh, and then the, what they told us, go to tourism. And tourism, whenever they want to switch off, they can switch off. So this is really the, the imbalance. If you want, I was in, in Rwanda, I met the president there. I said to him, if you want stability, make sure you have manufacturing make sure that you manufacture what manufacture ma manufacture what what you are going to consume if you are going to be simply a market it is a recipe for a disaster what is happening is big companies when i say uk when i say france when i say <coughs> germany i don't say the population the people of germany or people of uk is just a small tiny group of greedy capitalists sucking our blood and sucking your blood and what they are telling us, telling us clash of civilization, Islamists and this and that. So we can, we can <coughs> unemployed kids from Kelvin go to the rural peasants of Afghanistan killing each other there and the big companies are making the profit, are making the business. This big lie, we have to stop it and we have, we have to redefine the lines between them. Yes, there are us and them but us is not the Muslims and the West or the white versus the black. It's not that. Us and them are the greedy and the fair. Are the capitalists, are the exploiters and the exploited. This is where we have to define the line and we have to fight and we have to fight back. So we shouldn't accept their analogy. We shouldn't accept the rubbish they are selling us. In 17th of December, a young graduate, I'm not going to say he committed suicide, because I don't think he's, he's, he was suicidal. Suicide is something, is someone who's fed up of his life and he wants to get rid of his life. This is not suicide. This is an act of resistance. This is a man who's not, who was not a failure. He went to school, he studied against the odds, he graduated, he got his degree. He was not a, an arrogant man. He was not, he was a humble man to the extent that he has three sisters and his mother, his father died, and he has a small carrot selling fruits and veggies in the streets. So he's a person who wants to earn his, his, his living with dignity. Then they come and confiscate his goods, and when he went to complain, a policewoman slapped him in the face. So he protested because he wants to live in dignity. There is no life without dignity. It's not about bread, it's not about food. We are at the end of the day, human being, we are not cattle. That's what one, they want to describe us. Oh, they are protesting in Tunisia because there is unemployment. It's not only that. 
because unemployment is one of our rights, but it's not all of our rights. It doesn't mean if you go to the Gulf states and they have plenty of money, it doesn't mean they should have no other rights. That is, is also uh, in, incorrect. 17th of December, it started by the youth, by the youngsters. They are the force of change. I'm getting old. I think, John, you are getting old as well. Uh, so the youth, we have, we have to hand over now to the new generation and we tell them what should, what should happen. Don't be deceived with my black beard. It's, uh, I'm older than when I, what I look like. Uh, uh, so, uh, but uh, unfortunately, even we have the best trade unions, the most organized trade unions. But after this regime came, they corrupted everyone. And just for your knowledge, the trade unions, the leadership of the trade unions, they agreed just last year that the president will run for a sixth term. That means he's going to go for life. They agreed to change, to amend the constitution so it can suit him because he's 74. Uh, the constitution said the maximum age is going to be 74. In 2014, he's going to be 78. And they accepted that, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Three weeks, th uh, four we uh, two weeks into the revolution, and the trade unions did not move, so they didn't start it. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, students they were not there because it was a holidays, so it happened during the holidays. But it was the masses, every single one. Yeah, we have. They used Facebook, they used Twitter, and they used uh, YouTube is banned in Tunisia anyway. Even Facebook and Twitter are banned, but. You know, when you have educated people, always you can find if there is a will, there is a way. So the whole population. But the ones who played a proper, really proper and leading role are the lawyers. The lawyers somehow, they have some kind of protection. Because them, they have some kind of protection. They were the ones who were, were heading the, uh, the, the revolution. But after two weeks, the trade unions, they joined in. They joined and they gave it more power until the 14th of January when the president just fled the country like, like a rat uh, looking for somewhere to go and he ended up with the, with the Saudis there and you see the French, those dictators are disposable items. They use them and get rid of them. They bin them next day. Just two months ago Sarkozy was in Tunisia and he was uh, uh, praising Ben Ali and he was saying this is the model and this is and then he didn't let him get into the country mm -hmm. and now what is happening uh, in, on I remember very well because I was glued to TV and I have three telephone lines and all the time and Thursday night the president gave a speech and he said I'm going to uh, resign in 2014 I'm going to work on democracy I'm going to do this to do that on Friday morning people took to the streets and they say no we do not want you, you must go, you must go. Friday, Friday night he left. When he left, his clique came to power, they cling to power. So people, they came out, they said his clique must go because the clique comes from the ruling party. So today the ruling party was dissolved, mm -hmm. dissolved itself, by itself. And now they are coming out, they said even these few remaining ministers who are used to belong to the party, we don't want to see their faces. And today, they passed uh, general amnesty. I have been asked earlier, what do you think about the general amnesty? I said, I said the revolution, it's us to give them amnesty or not. Not them, the criminals, <laughs> to see whether they give us uh, amnesty or not. Uh, I, 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 it is sad to say that in 19... A couple of minutes. Oh, uh, sad to say uh, in 1987, some of the so-called leftists, people who uh, call themselves leftists and they are not. Uh, they are the little bourgeoisie, I call them. They joined the regime and said, we have to fight a common threat. And that common threat is, is the Islamists. It's not a matter of Islamists. Don't buy this. I don't want, there are many ladies here. I don't want to use the English words. Uh, but uh, don't buy that. Don't buy into that. This, we have to have a worldwide revolution, cross boundaries, cross faiths, cross cultures, because we are all exploited. Tony Blair did not send his son to Iraq to fight. It is, it is the poor guys took them out of the pubs and they sent them there. 
those are the ones. And when they come here, nobody will, nobody will look at them. Nobody will be bothered about them. A football player will get paid more than the entire army in Afghanistan. This is a capitalist system is killing all of us and we have to stand up. We have to speak up. Look in America, 30 million people for God's sake without, with, without health protection. The president comes and gives them that hope. People t took to the streets. They want to abolish it. What do you want to do? We don't want 13. We want 13 million people to be deprived from the basic protection, the basic basic health care. That's what they are selling you. That's what they are telling you. And we have to be united and we have not to be deceived by them. They deceived us enough. They took us to so many wars. And it is time now just to, to tell them out. It is, it is this century is the century of the people. I have been asked in many TV stations, is this the Islamic revolution? I said, call it whatever you call it, but me, I'm calling, calling it the people's revolution. Mm. And this is the people's will, the people's power, and is going to, be, uh, to, to prevail, inshallah. And thank you very much. <laughs> you know the famous saying, it says, revolution is planned for by the wise, <coughs> executed by the crazy, and only the opportunists can get the fruits. <laughs> and hopefully that we have to <laughs> hopefully we, we have to make sure that doesn't happen in in, in Shala and Tunisia. Uh, our friend there he talked about the thanking the French that they taught us how to make a difference between uh, the, the 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 religion, the faith and the uh, and the state, and that's an insult to the people of Tunisia who died fighting. And if the French, they come out, we'll kick them out with anyone coming with them. If the Americans, they come, we will do the same. And if the British, they come, we will do the same. Stop, and I hope that I, you don't thank the Israelis for taking your land. Uh, and, and I stop it there. Uh, about the Egypt, they like their great leaders. Of course, we like great leaders, but those are rats. Those are mice. They are not great leaders. They, there is nothing great about them. Uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, about amnesty, uh, to me, I don't really care about amnesty. Uh, it's us who give them amnesty. It's not it's not them. I think we have to be very very careful. I have been I have been talking about this. I don't I don't accept to be labeled as an extremist or Islamist or communist or any east, whether it's from the IST or e east means from the east of the earth. I don't accept all of that. We should not buy into this. Simply, they want to divide us like that. And are the reactionary forces who are spreading this word, and you know what is going to happen? Only the big fat cats are going to benefit from it. We shouldn't buy into that at all. To me, what we have to do is, 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 a, is between the oppressed and the oppressors. It's between the poor and those who have and those who have not. And those who have not, are not only the working class. But there is another huge class. We have five out of 11 million population, 70% uh, are, are youngsters. You have 550,000 graduates unemployed. Are they working class? They are not. They are not working. They are class not working. So we have to talk about the poor. And when I say the poor, is the absolute poverty. It's not the rel relative poverty. That means if you don't have money, it means you don't have money. It doesn't mean you have some handouts from the government. When you talk about Egypt, they have 1.75 million. Just hear it. 1.75 million in the police who earn less than 10 pounds sterling in a month. Do you consider them as... As what? As bourgeoisie? As working class? What you consider? I'm talking about the oppressed, and those guys to me are oppressed as well. We have we have to bring the balance right, and we have we should not allow these people. Talking about fundamentalism and socialism and all of that, there are always fake Islamists, fake socialists, fake revolutionists. It is so shameful that people who helped the regime for 20 years. And suddenly now in London, for the last 20 years I have been here, you never see their faces. Only their faces comes when the regime have their, 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 their events in the embassy, or all of them are there. And now, uh, after the 14th of January, suddenly I started discovering many revolutionists in, the, in, this, in, this, in this country. So be, be wary of these people. I, I think my, my sincere message out there is we the people of the world, because now your neighbor, 
is not necessarily an Englishman. A Muslim is not is not someone you have to cross the borders and you have to cross overseas to, to get to a Muslim or to Buddhist. If you want if you want third world country, just go to Brixton. You don't need to go to Africa. If you go to Africa, go to any capital. If you want to see uh, Paris, if you want to see New York, you don't need to take an airplane. Just go to the next mm. to the next quartier. Just mm. go to mm. the next neighborhood, mm. and you will see the big bourgeoisie there. Bourgeoisie is not one place. It's it's here and there, and those are they have a big network sucking the blood of the poor. And it is time for the poor to stop listening to them, and we have to, to work together. Because in the end of the day, they send us to war to kill each other. So they can make business, so they can sell, sell, sell their arms. I think it's time for, for, for a big awakening, and I, I hope that I, I leave it to Jeremy and uh, our friend to, to reply to the other questions.